Alright guys, this is Doc M and welcome back to another Minecraft video and I'm here with Methods of the Cycrus server. Hi Methods. Hey. <laughs> and yeah, today it's time after hundreds of requests to do the tutorial for the most devious trap. I think we can claim this title or at least, you know, it's up there in the top three <laughs> um, in Minecraft. And yeah, it's the bi Bouncing Betty Baby Zombie Trap. It's really evil. It's really evil. And yeah, you just saw the clips in the beginning. Method was going in there and he got obliterated despite really powerful gear, right? It was like, yeah, protection for gear and so on. And he tried hard to fight these guys, but no chance in hell. So yeah, the idea of the trap is really simple. Maybe Method, we can um, kill the zombies and I load up the spawner here. Um, it is um, yeah, a self-containing system, fully automatic, just have to load it once and um, yeah, then you should be good. So it's based on baby zombies and the whole setup is yeah, starting down here with a regular zombie spawner or you could also use a mob, tr a mob farm you have, you don't ha have to have a spawner close by. Um, anyway, you can get zombies and then we have a system down here which is a zombie filter system. So yeah, this is a regular spawner setup, you know, we just get the zombies out here. Here, baby zombies and adult zombies get separated, um, as you can see here. And yeah, they come through. And here we got another zombie coming from the spawner. And the idea is, um, the adult zombies swim up here and die and yeah, will drop loot down below. Um, as you can see it, and the baby you have a 50% of a baby being able to pick up stuff and yeah, this baby just did that. And then they swim up holding an item that means they will not despawn. Even if you unload the area or move away. So this is a way how you can persistently keep them. And yeah, the baby zombies just move up and eventually make it into the trap setup. As you can see, the guy is washed over and he lands up here and this is how you load this trap. So we were under the uh, assumption this trap can only hold uh, up to 24 baby zombies, you know, because of the mob cramming rule. If you have more than 24 mobs in a one by one, um, they would start to suffocate. But uh, truth be told, <laughs> this thing can actually hold a hundred or even more. Yeah. Normally, you know, they spread out like that and sit in the corners um, of the trap. That means you can have a lot. A whole lot. So as I said, approximately I would say four times 24 and yeah they would sit there and be very very gnarly. <laughs> so when the trap is loaded with the way we just showed you, you just pre pretty much AFK down at your mob trap or zombie spawner. Um, yeah the farm is pretty much ready to rock and yeah uh, maybe method you can go over to our button here and uh, I'll tell you when to hit it. So let me get a good angle here. All right, yeah, press the button. And we see the system triggering. Boom. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> crazy. Those baby zombies, we have them buffed in this case with speed two. So they're insanely fast. And they're also buffed with strength two. So extremely strong. Obviously, you know, if you think about it, you can do other stuff. Um, for example, you can replace the potions we dispense down here um, with invisibility. Um, right now, yeah, here we got the strength and on this side we would have the speed potions. And yeah, they get dispensed before the zombies get launched. So now imagine um, maybe speed two and invisibility, um, which is even more nasty. Uh, then we would have literally no chance, but yeah, the way it is set up right now, it is lethal. In this case, um, we have our Blaze uh, player detector attached to the system, which is able to detect players um, close by. But of course, you have a plentitude of ways or a multitude of ways um, to trigger this uh, system. You could have it hooked up to a door if somebody presses a button, if somebody walks over a pressure plate, you could have a trap chest triggering, you know, use your imagination. There is multiple ways to trigger this trap. But um, yeah, it's it's pretty sweet using the the, um, the 
blaze detector here. If you want to know how to build the blaze detector, I'm going to put a link in the video description to another video where we did um, yeah, hidden ninja skeleton snipers that uh, trigger fully automatic and it includes um, the blaze player detector as well. So you can check that out and learn how to build it. Really simple. And yeah, now um, we want to do a little tutorial for you guys. It's going to be partially showing you a block by block tutorial for the little um, yeah, redstone part below. And for the spawner setup, um, we're just going to look at it. I think it should be yeah, easy to replicate the way it is. So let's go. Well, I'm pretty sure, guys, most of you built a basic mob spawner collection system for mobs. It's pretty simple. You just have an eight long water stream here. And yeah, this thing is nine wide. It doesn't have to be nine wide, uh, but it fits nicely. And yeah, after you flush your mobs out, and I recommend though, to, um, need to tell you that real quick, to have a three block high gap here for the reason um, of the mobs, you know, maybe spawning back here. And it's, if it's only too high, they can get stuck at the spawner for a little bit. Um, like if they swim along like this. And you want to clear the area as fast as possible so new mobs can spawn, right? So yeah, have a three high gap and then the water. And then you just drop them two blocks down into a water stream. And the water stream just flows along. And you start the water stream right at the edge here and just let it flow. And then you should have one open block here right at the end of your spawner setup. And from there on out, we built the filter. So yeah, this is pretty much the trench we were just talking about and oh yeah okay I need to start it one block earlier so like here it would be like this and yeah flows eight blocks and then you just drop the zombies in here and you want to have a two high gap for the adult zombies and you want to have a one high gap for the baby zombies make sure this platform is three by five um, that is a safe bed so you can filter all all the baby zombies out and then um, you just come in here make a little ring around it and you place signs right here um, to stop the water from flowing down so that is the very basic yeah mop filter pretty much and yeah that's already it you cover it up here you make sure to place a water source block here in the corner and um, yeah also make sure to have a little gap here in the end and then what you need is a sign here to prevent uh, zombies from uh, the water from flowing and you get a little something like this and close it off and that's already the first part so let's say if we throw a baby zombie in here now you can see it will be washed over by the diagonal water stream and will be filtered out so that is part one. So now when we filter the baby zombies out, we want to do another two high drop here um, to make sure um, the water stream doesn't connect weirdly or anything like that. And you bring that over here and you close off the sides just like that. And bring the water stream over right under this place here where the big zombies get filtered out. Method maybe you can throw a big zombie in there and show how this guy would behave. In the meantime, you can close that off here, build up a little bit, and um, yeah, make sure to put some water source blocks in here. You can see the big zombies make it to this side. And of course, now you can see the water would be flowing back. You don't want that, so you simply put another sign here. And you get a nice draft where the uh, big zombies are pulled up just like that and they end up in here and the baby zombies end up on the other side so now you want to put another water block here and then keep on framing that in now we need to get rid of this guy here die stupid guy and you put another sign here and then you set up a lava cooker you could you don't necessarily need lava you can also just let the zombies drown um, but yeah now what happens is the zombies swim in there uh, swim up and die instantly and their loot drops right down here where the baby zombies will be able to pick the pick the loot up and yeah you want that because yeah you want um, them to be persistent and not go away in the end you can cap that off here if you want to 
And then, last but not least, you're gonna bring your tunnel around, around the corner here, and then you just need a water source right back here. And yeah, that should flow around the corner up to here. And you can see here is a little half slab, uh, half slab gap. Um, yeah, the loot will uh, be stored here and wait for you. Of course, you can also do a variation if you want. You can make these baby zombies even stronger and not rely on the loot of the adult zombies. For example, you could have a dispenser here and um, yeah, just regularly dis dispense some swords or something, you know, that would make that thing even more uh, mean. And yeah, here you can see it. See how the loot ends up here. And yeah, if, a, if a baby zombie comes along now, gets filtered out and we'll pick up the loot. So you see, and there he goes, and he jumps up there. So, that is the first part, that is the zombie filter, relatively easy to do. Now let's talk about how to transport baby zombies up, and yeah, how to get them into the actual trap, and we build that together. Alright, so, if you want to transport mobs up, it's normally relatively simple, but with baby zombies, it can be a bit more tricky. And yeah, there is a neat trick to do that. So, let's say, it depends of course where your trap is in relation to your spawner, um, but um, it's no problem to transport them up by any means. So, um, what you want to do is you put a sign right here after um, yeah, this half slab. And then, um, let's say, a few blocks over, I don't know, it can be a random distance, whatever. Let's say here, you want to build your shoot up. So you put another half slab down and you make sure to frame everything in nicely, like so. And then um, just put a water bucket right here after the sign, on top of the half slab, and that will grab the baby zombie and pull it along. So now the upwards part can be a bit tricky. You would say, why? I can just use full blocks like that and build up, but that can be a little issue with setups like that because um, yeah, little baby zombies tend to stand like right here in the middle and then can get stuck at this block. This is why we use a little trick. We use cobble fences to guide the zombies up, then gives them a half a block more breathing space and this way the zombies can never get stuck down there. So yeah, then you just transport them up however many blocks you want, and like so, F keep on framing it in. You don't need these blocks here necessarily. And make sure to have another sign here um, to trap your water source block. You can see the baby zombie is swimming up now nicely. And maybe method you can spam a few baby zombies into the channel. So we definitely see one or two that will behave a bit weirdly. And you would see them swimming r up here right in this gap. Um, chances are one or two will do this. Yeah. Now we are lucky. Ah, see? So sometimes this can happen. They tend to swim up right there. And if you don't do it like this, they can easily get stuck. And then, um, you know, just make sure um, you kept this off here again, have the tunnel closed like that, and um, yeah, we are good. This lower block here m must always be a fence post, cannot be a regular block, otherwise they can get stuck. Just keep that in mind, the block above the sign. Method There why? you go. No. Yeah, you want to demonstrate how they get yeah. stuck? Yeah, I was like, why is he constantly breaking this block? <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you just saw it. And yeah, this is um, a neat way to transport them up. Works 100% reliable. Nothing bad will happen from that. So now let's say our spawner um, would be further down, right? And you have to transport them, let's say, over 20, 30 blocks up. Of course, uh, mobs can suffocate and uh, take drowning damage. And to prevent that for baby mobs, you cannot have a one wide gap just with a sign, right? Um, how you would do it with grown up mobs. So to do that, um, you do a little sidestep thing here, pretty much. So let's kick them in. You can see you have a little breathing gap like that. See, you just bring them over um, a block uh, and then keep transporting them up. And by the mo zombies coming through here, they have an air gap, can breathe, and then you go further up and further up. And you can pretty much transport them as high up as you want, and it will take no drowning damage. So yeah, this is part two. 
And now I'd say um, we finish this tunnel here off camera and then we actually start building the trap set up, the yeah, bouncing baddy we called it. Alright, so when you reach the surface it's recommended, it makes it easier that when from your uh, elevator until the area where you want to drop the zombies in, which would be here, you should have eight blocks. It makes it easier because, you know, stops the water right here. So, yeah, just make sure to lay it out in a way um, that you can do that. Otherwise, you have to maybe go in circles or do some other complicated stuff, but you really want the water to stop um, just before the contraption. And so you get some relation to things. Here is the water tunnel and obviously you want to cap that water tunnel off as well just if you have it kept kept off mobs move in the tubes faster and you only need a one high gap here because yeah you only have baby zombies and then pretty much from um, yeah from your water chute you go down one two blocks and then you have your piston and yeah your dirt would be right here your dirt block that gets removed and then you can cover that up nicely like so and nobody would see what's going on um, below so it's perfectly flush and hidden and yeah then you start off with three pistons arranged like that and um, a lower piston like that and now you need a slime block that is the slime block that launches the baby zombies up and bounces them around just like that and then you need three immovable blocks you can use obsidian melons uh, Oh, glazed terracotta right now. <laughs> that yep. would work too. Dispensers for potions. Yeah. <clears throat> Dispensers and whatnot. And yeah, you build this frame. And um, obviously, we want to use the potions. So it makes sense to use dispensers here right away, pointing um, towards the inside. So let's say we want to install two dispensers. So maybe put another one here method. Um, exactly and like that and that is the area that will hold the baby zombies in place very simple so um, now we want to build the launcher um, or the pickup area for the block or the pickup system for that um, you need a sticky piston facing upwards and you need um, an observer and where is my observers right here and the observer needs to face um, yeah, you need to place it like this, so the red dot is actually here, you need to place it like this, yeah, like so, and that is the basic setup. Now we need a little bit more wiring. Alright, so when you have the basic setup in there, it's time to do some very simple wiring. Um, what you want to do is put down three half slabs here right next to your sticky piston and put three repeaters on there on max delay. And then you build a little staircase up, like so, very simple, and you slap some redstone on there. Next, you want to put a little helper block, which you will remove again, put a observer in there and a full block on top of the observer. Um, yeah, next, put a full block here, which you will also remove again, put a half slap here, four ticks delay. And last but not least, you want to place an observer in there like so. And yeah, that already completes the setup. So if you take a button now and press that, you can see. Yeah, we grab the block and put it back in place. Now would be maybe the time to build your ceiling or whatever you need here and fully hide the setup and we are ready to wire up the rest. So to hook up the dispensers um, it's very simple you can just branch off from here and bring another line forward you need a repeater here and yeah wire it like that and you need another block of some sort here you can use a half slap if you want and that will trigger both of those and you can fill whatever potions you want in there. And that's the redstone for the bouncing betty setup. Um, last but not least, yeah, frame in. Of course, so the zombies cannot escape. So, to be able to pretty much hook up anything you want to the setup, 
you need a little yeah let's say signal st stabilization setup and that is just done with a short pulser here and then works just fine so this was your original button we just pressed to trigger the setup and now we extend that um, to another input here and yeah in our case as you can see we just simply have our place player detector hooked up to that but you could hook up a chest or you know all the different things you want to that and to do that it's very simple so just from here you connect with a repeater on basic setup uh, setting and then you build a little pulse lengthener um, I can knock that out so you can see that um, very simple component it's just um, redstone on top of that and yeah you have a comparator facing this way in there and last but not least you want to connect that you know, with a repeater on the max setting and this is a sticky piston with a block on top and a redstone dot and here this block would now be your input um, you know for whatever you want to use and last but not least obviously you maybe want to switch off your trap right you do have a safety switch uh, to disable it and we do that by simply retracting the block of the short pulser and yeah you can really easily do that if you take a lever and then you can wire that to wherever you want and now if an input, uh, input comes here you can see of course nothing would happen and if you want to trigger it again yeah there you go so that's your safety switch you want to probably have a secret switch or some means of disabling this trap if you have that in your base otherwise yeah might be a bit problematic and yeah I'd say that concludes the tutorial method right there is nothing else to say pretty pretty simple setup maybe we can do one test run with invisible zombies I really want to see how that works um, do we have invisibility potions in yeah. there all Already. right nice uh, yeah let's try that let's kick some some babies in there I really want to see how it is when they're invisible <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna put on the protection five uh, four diamond leggings, and let's see. I'm gonna take a sword with me, and then I'm just gonna wander in there like an idiot. Okay, I think we should be ready, right? We got enough in there, yeah. Okay, coming in. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> what? I was about to say it didn't work. <laughs> yeah, I was like, huh? <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Invisibility is the way to go, I think. Oh my god, that is that is just uh, straight up nasty. No idea what just happened. A trapdoor goes out, uh, goes open, or opens in the ground, and you just die. Wow. <laughs> Man, yeah. If you have any questions, um, feel free uh, to yeah, ask them in the comment section. And I'm also going to link um, the Hermitcraft episode where I actually test this in a real life scenario on a survival server. So it's definitely doable, um, definitely manageable and very lethal. And I'd say thanks for watching. Also make sure to check out all the links to the SciCraft guys. I think uh, I'm just going to link um, the latest server tour, right? That, that would make sense. I so guess that's fine. Yeah, so people can see what you guys are up to. Make sure to check them out. And in the server tour video, then you see all the links to everybody on the SciCraft server. Some crazy survival stuff. They take things to the extreme. If you look around here a little bit, there's lots of stuff um, those guys been working on. This is a new server, but it's already full of things. So in any case, thanks for watching, my friends. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you, Method, for helping me out as usual. And no problem. I'd say bye guys, make sure to leave a lot of likes, share this, and if you manage to build it and kill some of your friends on the server, always looking forward to videos and <laughs> tweets about it. Bye guys. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>